and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we're going to be taking on what I suspect may be one of the most brilliant puzzles of all time. And I say that because um, if you look at the comments on the puzzle on the screen, which is called Four Colour Theorem, and it's by Jay Dyer. And if you look at the comments on Logic Masters Germany, by the few people who've managed to solve this, they are, well, fulsome in their praise would be doing it um, a disservice. Uh, people like Emre Kolotoglu, who's an absolutely brilliant solver and setter, said that it was, um, what did he say, one of the best puzzles of all time. Um, totally Normal Cat, one of their favourite puzzles of all time. Um, so, yeah, th this this should be extremely good and extremely interesting. I do vaguely know, well, I do know what the four colour theorem is. If you don't know what it is, definitely have a look at the Wikipedia page because, you know, that, that'll that divert your attention for a few minutes. It's basically the the idea that any, any map can be coloured into any map that, imagine the, the a picture of the United States of America and all of the states obviously dotted around. You can colour the states in only four colours, such that no two states that share a boundary have the same colour. And that, that holds true for any, any, any map, a, any collection of cells. So actually in a normal Sudoku grid, you know, where you have three by three boxes, you could certainly apply the four colour theorem to that. Um, but we're going to be applying it today to what looks like a chaos construction. We're given no regions at all. Um, and I'll, I'll read the rules in a moment. The real rules are really quite simple, given given the ideas behind this. Um, but I have been warned that this is a very challenging puzzle, so this might be a very long video. Uh, I know some of you like that, um, and I hope that this will be good for you guys, assuming, of course, I can solve it. It's got five stars out of five difficulty, so it's one of those that may be troublesome. We shall see. Um, but before I read you the rules, I need to say a very happy birthday today to Nick. Nick, your wife Beth got in touch with us and said that you, well, I think the words were you watch the channel all the time and that all the time was all capitalized as if it was being shouted. So I'm not sure if that's, um, <laughs> if that's a polite hint that you're watching it too much or whether it's just um, uh, uh, Beth is very pleased with uh the, the dedication you show uh, to watching Cracking the Cryptic. But anyway, Nick, I hope you have a brilliant birthday today with lots and lots of cake, of course. Um, now, the only other thing to mention today is, well, it's about tomorrow. Uh, Mark and I are going to be streaming tomorrow night, 10 p.m. UK time. We'd love to have your company. We're going to be, what are we doing? Ah, no, I don't want to show you the picture of my StarCraft 2. Uh, where is it? Oh, here it is. <laughs> That's what I wanted to show you. The, the, um, the, the thumbnail for, for the stream. Um, so we're going to be working working our way through the 500,000 subscriber special app that we've released. Um, and we're going to be trying the puzzles in that app. There are 23 of them in all. So I very much doubt this is going to all get done in one stream. Um, but we, we'd love to have your company. And if you haven't tried the app puzzles yet, you really must. They're completely free. Just download an app called Cracking the Cryptic on uh, Steam, on Android or on App Store and you'll be able to play the puzzles in there and they are from the great and the good of the Sudoku community, including, I would like to say, Jay Dyer. Um, so anyway, that said and done, let's get on with Jay's puzzle now. What are the rules of the four color theorem? We have the following. Each row, column and nine cell region must contain the digits one to nine once each. The regions must be determined by the solver. Uh, each region must be coloured in its in its entirety with a single colour. No two regions of the same colour may share an edge, and at most four distinct colours may be used. So this is how the theme is coming into the rules. Um, now, cells containing arrows give the distance to the nearest cell of the same colour in each indicated direction. Neighbouring cells are a distance one from each other. Okay, so if, let me just understand this, if that was a four, now I tried to type four, managed to type five, that's not a good start. Um, if this was a four, there's an arrow pointing downward, so let's say that was purple. That's a terrible color, I can't see the arrow. Let's make it red. Um, what that's saying is that, give the distance to the nearest cell of the same color. It doesn't say in the same region, it just says the same color. So one, two, three, four. 
So I think this would be red. It may or may not be in the same nine cell region as this one, but these three cells would definitely not be red. I suppose they could be, they could be in different regions. They could be in the same region, but they're definitely not red. And then it says all possible arrows are given. All possible arrows are given. Oh, I see. Right, so what that's saying is that... Let's just stick with this example of this being a 4. Imagine that in this direction, in an easterly direction, the first time a red cell had appeared was this cell. So all of these were different. Then the puzzle would be broken. Because I think what we're being told here is there ought to be an arrow pointing right at this cell. And there isn't. So in fact, if you did work out that's a four, because there's an absence of an arrow in an easterly direction, you would know that this was not red. That is going to be an absolute brute, especially in an irregular Sudoku, because <laughs> you're going to have to keep track of where there, where there aren't arrows, but there could have been arrows. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's playing with my head. I'm not going to think too hard about that. I'm going to hope it, not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm sure it will matter, but I'm going to hope it doesn't matter early. Um, do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, the, the, the way I have seen puzzles a bit like this before, and the way I normally start them is I find arrows that point towards the edge. Because like this cell here, I mean, there's no way that can be a three, because that would be saying that the first time the colour that was in this cell is repeated is off the grid. So I think that cell has to be a 1 or a 2. Uh, that cell has to be a 1 or a 2. Uh, that cell has to be a 1, 2, 3 or 4. That cell's a 1 or a 2 again. Okay, let's see if that cell is a 1, 2 or a 3. Th oh, well hang on. That cell's just a, a write-in one, isn't it? I'm slightly perturbed by that. I don't know if I believe it or not, but that does seem to be true. It can't be anything else. It's pointing at this cell, which must therefore be the same colour as it, because there are no cells more easterly than that. This is the edge of the world. So those two cells are the same colour, and that one's the, that one's the same colour as well. So all of those three are our first... I'm going to use red because it worked well with the example. I could see the, I could see the arrows behind behind the redness. So those digits are all the same, and that cell has become a two, and that two means that's not a two, and that's telling us. Ooh, and this is where it gets a bit more complicated. Look, because it's telling us those two cells are the same. Let's make those green. I see the green. Yeah, I can see the arrow there. But this cell is definitely not green. Is what we've just discovered because, uh, no, I don't like purple. Let's go for blue. Um, because if this had been green, this cell should have been a one, I think. Yes, that is the way the rules work, isn't it? It's saying the first cell. Yes, it's the first cell in that direction. So, so this is not green. Actually, it's not one or two either. So it's a, this is at least a, a three. Ah, okay. It's not a three. It's not a three because if it was a three, don't we have a problem with this one? I'm just thinking if that's a three, that's saying that in this southerly direction, the third cell is the first blue that's seen. But this has got an arrow in it as well. And if this blue is saying, well, if this arrow is saying this is the first blue seen in a southerly direction, then the first blue seen in a northerly direction from here is going to be that cell. And that's going to require that to also be a three, I think. So I think that this cell is now at least equal to four, which actually isn't telling us very much, is it? Four, five, six, seven. Can it, I can't be eight, can it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no. So this is four, five, six, or seven. And that seems over a bit overzealous on the pencil marking. Right, but let's carry on. This one has to be one, two, or three, because it's looking at 
north in a north direction. That's looking east. So that's a one, two, or three. So there's definitely now a three in one of those cells because this is a one, two, three triple, and the three of it is in this domino. Let me just think about that for a moment. So if that's a three, that's saying those cells are all the same. No, this is the same problem. This is the same problem as we we're going to have here. If the, oh, whoopsie, whoopsie, whoopsie. Um, if this is a three, then this cell and this cell have the same color, but that arrow would need to therefore have a three because these two could not be three because of this three. So this is not three, which means that's three which means these two cells are the same color. Oh, now this is gonna get really, really complicated now because what is the relationship of this cell to red? And the answer is I haven't got a clue. And what's the relationship of this cell to green and blue? And the answer is I haven't got a clue. But I do know those two are the same. So I have to record that, don't I? I'm going to make those yellow. But at the moment, other than... Well, I do know that blue and green are different from each other. Oh, I'll tell you what I should do. Maybe I should use line, line, the line drawing tool. Because blue and green are different because of the two clue, I can isolate this cell. Um... That's a, that's a valid line segment, isn't it? Now, the other thing that occurs to me is the negative constraint because, yes, if that cell was red, wouldn't there need to be an arrow pointing at it? I think there would. So there, there you go. Right. So those two cells, because there is no arrow pointing from red at them, cannot themselves be red. And that means I could do that. Now, does that mean that yellow and red are different? I fear not. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I think they could be the same. I don't know. All right, so I don't think I can justify yellow and red being the same or different. Let's try putting some more numbers in the grid. Um, although I think I'm running out of anything that's near the edge now. So this could be where we're about to get very badly stuck. Right, that's not a three by Sudoku. Um, hmm. Is there anything out of that one maybe? Yeah, okay, that one. That's only three from the southerly edge. So that's got to be a one, two or a three. Oh, goodness me. Um, that cell can't be a one because it would repeat one in its region. So that's at least a two. It can't be a four because then it would point at that cell and they would both have to be fours. So that's either, could be two, three, oh no, two, three, five, six, seven, no, it's just, I just don't think that's the way to solve this puzzle. It's going to be to fill in all of these arrows with every single one of their possibilities. That seems the way that madness will lie. Um, ah, what about that cell, which sees a one, two, three, triple? So this cell's color is looking at least, at, if this was a four, one, two, three, four. Is that possible? Or does that break for some reason? Is this that, I don't think the negative constraint is a problem there, is it? Because if that was a four, that's saying all of these are not yellow. This is yellow. And this is a three, so it doesn't need to have an arrow in a westerly direction. So I think that's okay. So I think this could be a four. 
four, five, six, ah. Ah, there's a small interesting point. It can't be a seven, weirdly, because if it was a seven, it would be pointing at this cell, but what it should be pointing at is this cell, because that's the first yellow cell in the easterly direction. So that cell actually is four, five, or six, I want to say. So it's pointing at one of those three cells. So if I knew these two were the same colour, then it couldn't be six. Ah! Well, no, OK, that can't be one, can it? Because it's looking at this cell. Yes, if that's one, that would have to be a one because these would be the same colour. Ah, ah, so that's two. This is one. Oh, and now we're going to get in a right pickle because... Well, I understand what's going on down there. Those three cells are the same. Oh, that's terrible. Sorry, it's terrible colour. I can't see the grey background, the grey arrows beneath the... Um, let me choose a different, maybe grey itself. Look, I can actually see the grey beneath the grey, which is ironic. So those are all the same. Ah, right, OK, now hang on. That cell is not grey. Because if it was grey, there should be an arrow pointing downwards. And up here... Yeah, OK. So because the first time whatever this colour this is, is seen in this direction is there, that must be a boundary and that must be a boundary. So I think we're going to have to... Ah, this is going to be horrible, though. This is going to get so difficult. Um, I don't even know what colour to safely use here. Maybe I'll use... Black? No, that's a bit... This looks a bit garish, doesn't it? Can I actually see behind? No, I, can't, I really can't see the purple arrow there. Um, maybe I'll reuse red and then try and remember that this is not saying that I know that red and this cell are the same. So this red means that's red, means this is red, and these two are not red, but we don't know what colour they are. And this red may have no relationship at all to that red. There, we've said it. Um, Right, but do I... Oh, now, hang on. Now do I know that red and grey are diff different? No. <laughs> no, this is, this is going to be mad. How are we going to do this? I'm going to get myself in all sorts of trouble here. I'm already feeling in trouble. Um... Hmm. So I don't... I don't know how we're going to get any certainty amongst the distribution of colours. Ah, hang on, that cell's a one or a two. I've just noticed it's got a southerly arrow, so that can't be very large. If that's a two, it's grey. Which actually looks... No, no, that is not two, actually, I've just noticed. Not because of this grey, but because of that cell. Yeah, that's interesting. If that's a two, this is it's grey, because obviously it must be hitting this cell, and this is grey, but this is definitely not grey, because it's a two and not a one, and therefore that cell is part of a different region that could only be one cell in size. So that's quite cool. So actually that cell is a one, I think, which means it's not grey. It's definitely not grey because it would be the second one in the grey region. So that's powerful. Look, those three digits are the same. Uh, I'll reuse yellow down here. And yellow, in fact, this cell not being yellow means that I can bound that. I can bound this, bound this, bound this, because we can't have two ones in the same region. And that means... What does that mean? Um, hmm, I don't know. Right, there's a tiny point. That cell is not grey. Because if that was grey, it would need to be a 1, and there'd be the second one in the region again. So that's a little edge we can draw in. This is getting mighty complicated now. Um, do we know what... I'm wondering... No, hang on, hang on. 
Oh, I've got. I think I've broken it. So sorry, I think I've made a mistake. I'm worried about this digit. Let me. Ex well, I think this can only be a one, and then this looks like it's got trapped. Hang on, what's going on? This can't be a three, because if it was a three, it would be saying one, two, three is the first blue that we see, which would mean that this would need to be a three as well. So that's not a three. I don't think this can be a four for the same reason. If this is four, it's the same color as this cell, but then it should be a two because it already sees a green cell within two of it, not within four of it. So I think that is a one, which means this is blue. But that doesn't work because now this can't be correct, can it? Oh, what's, oh, hang on. Because now this cell sees that cell. Why do I think these two are the same color? Oh, is that the mistake I'm making? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Why have I made this cell blue? Why did I do that? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. I don't know. Is it because, why did I make this blue? Blue, I must have done that for a reason, I must have done. I don't think it can be blue. Because I don't think... It works with a one, three or a four clue. Maybe it can be a different number in the clue. It could be, no, it's got, it's pointing north. It's got to be one, two, three or four. It can't be two. It's got to be one, three or four. I've justified it cannot be four because that would break this. It can't be three because there'll be two threes looking at it, each other. So it is one, but I think the point is it cannot be blue. And I don't know for the life of me why I made it blue, but that's, that's important, isn't it? because now those two cells are the same color. I don't think I would have used the blueness of this because I'd never looked at this cell before. My worry is, did I make it blue because I had a good reason to make it blue? It might have been, I was looking at this cell and noting it couldn't be the same color as this cell and then didn't remove the color from it. That's, that's possible. That would, that would be the least offensive thing I could have done. Right, but anyway, this, this is a one, which means that, that is in the same region. Oh no, it's, more, it's much more powerful than that. It's much more, this is green. Oh no, but it, didn't I say it could? No, I said it couldn't be green if it was a four. <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy, but I think it can be green now. Let me explain why I think it's green. Well, these two are the same. Uh, let's just make them. Oh, I don't want to make them purple because I can't see the thing very well. No, I'll make them. Hmm. I'm going to make them black just for a moment. Now, this one is because there's no arrow in this direction, this direction or this direction. This is a cul-de-sac. So we can draw this in. Now, this is where I want to be really careful. Is it really true to say red and black are different? And it is, it is true to say that because of this two clue. So that is a valid line segment. And now this two cell region must extend. So it must go into green, which converts black to green. And therefore, Therefore what? Does that mean th this green joins to this? Not necessarily, although it does look very likely to me. Do I know that blue is different from red? No. <laughs> of course I don't. Do I know that? Not really. Do I know yellow is different from red? Because then this yellow would be pinched in. 
In fact, do I even know that yellow is different from green? I don't think so. Oh, this is mad. This is really difficult. This is really difficult. What's that? I don't know. <laughs> I just suddenly thought maybe I can do something with the fact that it clearly can't be one or two, so it's at least three. Now, if it's three, it's pointing at that cell, which would mean, well, actually, hang on, hang on, hang on. That is a new color, isn't it? This might be the way to do this. This cell here, I'm going to make it purple because it's not got an arrow in it. So I think that's legitimate. Um, we do know this is not red. We also know from this cell it's not green. So this is a genuine third color, which I think is the first one of those we found. And to get this color out, it has to go there. So that is actually, that feels like quite interesting progress. And that all came from considering this, didn't it? Which, if it's not three, it can't be four, because if it's four, it should have been two, because it sees red before it sees this fourth cell away, it sees that cell. So it's not four, which means it could be five. Now, interestingly, it can't be six, because then it would be pointing at this cell, and it should have been pointing at this cell, but it could be that cell, which is a seven. So this is three, five, or seven. And the only things I'm comfortable with in terms of independent colors are those cells. Those cell cells really are all different colors. Blue, I know is not green, but that's all I know about it. That being a two means that's a one I've just noticed. Sorry, I should have spotted that earlier. So those three cells are the same color. I'm going to make those blue just because they're not near this blue. Um, and, right, that cell's got to be in a different region because there's no uh, easterly arrow. Yeah, okay. And blue is different from red. Although this red bears no relation to the reds on the left. But blue is different from red because if they were the same, there would be two ones in those region, in that region. So that seems reasonable. So... Actually, right, here's something interesting. That cell is the fourth color. I'm not sure that's true. I'm just going to think about that for a moment. The reason I think that might... Oh, it's a terrible choice. Um, let me just make it... I'll make it purple again. Um, so here's my logic for thinking this is the fourth color. And I'm thinking exclusively here about this arrangement of colors in the top right. This three is saying that these two are not the same as yellow. So that's the starting point. This one is not the same as yellow and forces these to be the same. So this is, this is definitely a second color. This one now can't join this. Oh, this could be yellow. Ah, so I'm talking total nonsense. Well, this is a third colour, but it's not necessarily the fourth. It depends what this is. And although I can say red is different from blue, I can't say it's necessarily different from yellow. Although I do know it's different from purple. Oh, this is completely crazy. So that's got to be purple now, which creates another thing I can't see. Actually, I'll change that to grey. I can see the greys. So that's got to be... And, this has to, and that's because this has to come out. But look, if yellow is not red, that's going to put lots of pressure on grey to come out again. Wow. Wow. What a puzzle. It's, a, it's an amazing idea. But how you set it, I mean, it's hard enough to solve it. How do you, how you set it so that this all, this all fits together? I mean, it's mind-bending. Right. So I've got, right, one little point I've just thought of, which is totally obvious actually now I think about it again, is I've got to keep the twos apart, don't I? I can't have two twos in the same region. 
don't think I know anything about this. Oh, yes, I malign it unfairly. Naughty Simon. This cannot be a two because then it's pointing at this cell, which would also be a two. So that's a one or a three. What about that? That looks like it wants to point at blue, doesn't it? If it didn't point at blue, it couldn't be a one. So it would have to point up there and be quite a lot. It'd have to be a five or a six. Well, okay, so that cell is either, it cannot be a one. So if it is blue, it must be a two because it couldn't be a three or a four because it would see this one first. And then if it's not blue, it has to be seeing either that or that, which is five or six. So that's two, five or six. Um, oh dear. What about... What on earth am I meant to do now? I wonder if I'm supposed to know where this goes. So this, I've got no, I've got no idea what color this is. I think this could be red, but it's not green. So it could, it could go through this red, you know, it could form a region that comes down there, probably does. It creates a T region. That looks quite tempting actually, doesn't it? What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Not, not according to the rules I've understood anyway. Can I do Sudoku? I've got five ones in the grid. Sudoku doesn't seem very useful actually without regions. Um, are there any arrows now that we can rule one? I can rule one out of the... If I rule one out of an arrow... Yeah, okay, that's an interesting point. Yes, it's really obvious. I should have spotted this before, but I've only just thought of it. If you rule one out of an arrow, you can always do that in the direction that the arrow is pointing. Because obviously this being a two, it's pointing at earliest to this cell so this can't be the same color as this so any arrow with a one looking at it we can do that in the direction of the arrow now that might be handy um, so that can't be a one look here because of this one so that cannot be in the same region now, this is really interesting um, This three obviously can't be seeing, yes, anything, anything without a one. Uh, that one, can that be a one? Can that be a one? Then that would be a two. No, hang on, that doesn't work, does it? I might be wrong about this, but that's my instinct. If that's a one, that's a two. Oh no, but that's fine. Sorry, no, that's okay. It's okay because these don't have to be the same color. It's true to say they couldn't be the same color then, but that's sort of self-evidently obvious. So, okay, that's, that's a total nonsense. But doesn't F? Of course, oh my goodness me. Oh my goodness me. I think I've just wasted everyone's Oh, no, no, no. I have a feeling the colour has just drained from my face, which is ironic, um, given... Oh, no. Yeah, OK. Every single one in this puzzle must have an arrow on it. Because if you think about it, there are nine regions, every one in a region where that one is, it must point in the directions that the region extends from the one. Because if there was no arrow on, on a one in this puzzle, that would be saying there was no connected cell to the one of the same color as the one. So the one would be a one cell region, which is total nonsense. So every single one in this puzzle 
has to be on an arrow. And I've only got five of them. Come on, that must be important. Let me just see if we can use that. Maybe you can't. Maybe. No, you can. All right, I've spotted one place I can use it. Which is really lovely. Where does one go in row two? There must be a one in row two in the puzzle. It can't go there because it would be in the same region as this. And it can't go on these arrows. Yet we know the one is on an arrow, so that's a one. That is literally a one. And therefore, those are in... Well, this is huge, because now this is not in this, this, or this is region. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. This is massive. Um, these are now in the same region. That. This now cannot be a one, because it would be in the same region as a one already. So that is forced Right, well, okay. If I've justified that this is not a 1, and I think I just have, then where's the 1 in row 1 going? It's got to go there. Oh, this this is massively powerful. So now those are all in the same region, and I can draw that line segment in. And now all of a sudden I've got more 1s than I used to have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Oh, I've, here's one I've missed. Where does the 1 go in that row? Well, there's only one arrow in this row, so it must go there. Which means I can do more of this stuff. These are all in the same region. And one, two, three, four. I've now got eight ones. I've not got the one in this column. Right, so it must go there. That's the only place the one can go by Sudoku. So that's a one. I can draw that barrier in, and those are in the same region. And therefore, surely this matters. Surely this matters, because that is a massive step forward all of a sudden. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking for cells in the grid that are going to have trouble collecting a one, because we know that everything in the grid must connect to a one. One of the ones that we've placed... Uh, I'm sort of thinking about that cell, but that might not be where I want. I'm just checking other cells as well. I've got to get this purple connected to a one as well. That doesn't. The problem is I just don't know what the how the colours are distributed. All of these colours I've got in the grid, I don't trust them at all, and yet they distract me. Right, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe it is this one. This has to connect to a one. Now, because of the divisions we've managed to put between cells, if it comes this way, it can't connect to this one because of the barrier. It can't connect to this one because of this barrier. And if it comes down here, when well, the moment it takes this cell, it can't connect to yellow because of the barrier. So if it does try and get out this way, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's no one anywhere near it. So it has to, I think, take those cells. So I'm going to make those blue just to make them the same as this. I'm saying nothing about whether this is the same blue as this. But now this, which we know is the same as that and different from that, has to connect down here. Now, does that mean this is a new colour? It does, doesn't it? So I think... That I th ah, but I still don't know whether this is a blue colour. Ah, no, I do know now. Oh, this is beautiful. Yes, I do know now, because if red was actually blue... These are the strange sentences we get to say. If red was blue, that cell would see red earlier than three, and it doesn't. So so red and blue are different. We know that green and red are different from this clue, and we know that blue and green are different from this clue. So actually, we've got somewhere here. I'm not sure quite how far we've got, but, well, actually, no, I've got low, I have got somewhere, because look, this region is now bounded. I've got seven cells in it that's got to complete there. 
that's forced. So all of a sudden, my green region is done. Oh, this is so clever. Jay, this is so clever. Right, and now my red region here, which I know is the same colour as this, has to grow out here and is not the same colour as yellow. Although, remember that yellow could be the same colour as green or blue. And purple could be the same colour as blue. <laughs> uh, red could be the same colour as grey. Actually, red probably is the same colour. Actually, where does red, where does this red get a one from? Because it's got this cell, so it's not allowed to join yellow. This would be huge because that would be a nine cell region. Right, so if red is not grey, red comes here, where it cannot be purple because of this boundary. Yeah, and that, that is a real boundary from this two clue. So red would come here, so it can't connect that one because then because of this boundary yeah red doesn't get a one red is forced to be there so gray has become red at the bottom of the grid and that's that's a nine cell region which i can therefore delineate and now my yellow region which of course may not really be yellow but it's now got to come along the bottom of the grid quite a long way four five six seven eight right i've got one more cell to add to yellow um and the yellow is very much a placeholder colour. Um, now, red look, this red has to get out. Well, it's got to get out to there at least, because it's not the same as purple, and it's not the same as green, but it could be perhaps the same as yellow. <laughs> so that's a bit annoying. Um, in fact, can we play this? Oh, no, hang on. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I was wondering where this red got its one from, but I'm actually wondering if it's a better question to ask where this purple gets its one from. Because purple, as it, as it grows, it has to take this cell or this cell or both of them, which rules this one out from being in purple. Now, purple can't escape to here because it would clash with this region and that's not going to work so purple has to purple has to take those two cells but then so purple could be blue and get a one that way uh, how yeah hang on doesn't that have to be purple I'm getting confused now because I'm worried I'm, I'm worried I'm sort of merging my colors in my brain um, if purple is yellow that is one possibility we can consider but I don't see how that works because if purple is yellow to get hold of a one then the one that purple would purple yellow would have to collect in this grid would have to be this one and then this red region never gets a one because this red region at the moment could collect that one. But if if really if really we ring it like that, that red region is completely surrounded and it can never get, for example, to this one. So that does not feel correct to me. So I don't think that purple gets its one from here. And therefore, I think it must get its one from here. Now, this blue was a placeholder, I think. So I think I can purplify this. But I, what am I saying about the color of purple? I'm saying it's not red or green. Am I saying it's not blue? I'm certainly not saying it's not blue. Or though, am I? Oh, no, I'm really not, because that could be a three and that would work. So purple absolutely could be blue. But yellow now must be red. <laughs> but this, I think this yellow must be red because if this yellow is not red, how is it going to be a nine cell region? <laughs> it can't be, can it? 
it's it's going to have to take those two cells and then there isn't enough room for red so that that cell has become red and red is a real color the left hand side we have really got some real colors and now red needs a one which is not purple ah can it get that one one two three. no it can't get that one without penning in this this region so this is red uh, which means this cell must be part of red, otherwise it's, it would have to be a nine cell region separating this nine cell region, and that's going to make this too big. So that's also red. I've now got seven cells of red. And that's interesting. This cell, therefore, must be red, because if it's not, this red region can never reach nine cells in size. So that's red. Ah, so now, now this is a question, isn't it? But ah, hang on, red. Hang on, this is where it's going to get mad, right? So we're going to get rid of this red colour because that's going to confuse me. I'm going to instead put a little line to indicate they're in the same thing. But I've realised that this red is telling us it's the same colour as that, so that needs to be red, not yellow. Now, so I've still absolute. I'm absolutely prepared to believe that purple and blue are the same, especially if that's a three. got okay I can delineate along here that's fair um, I've got seven cells of purplification done oh I know what I could do here I think I think I could limit the, the possible values of this cell because this can't be a one because of the one in the column so it must be pointing at this this cell at the earliest, which is a three. So it could be a three. If it's not a three, it has to be pointing at this cell in the red region, because if it points at those two, it should have pointed at this one. So that's four. Or it could be pointing at the, no, it can't be pointing at the very top. There is There is an arrow pointing down. And that would break, because these would have the same number in them. So, this is a three or that feels like it's very important to me. Three or four in that cell. So if it's pointing there. I don't know. I don't know. Oh no, then it would be red. Oh, hang on, that's massive. Is that true, what I've just said there? What I'm thinking is, if that's a four, it is pointing at red. And I do know that this red and this red are the same for, because of this clue. So that doesn't work. This cannot point at this. This is so brilliant. Jay, this is just brilliant. So that's a three, and it's pointing at purple. But purple could be blue. no idea what that does if anything do I now know that purple is not the same as yellow <laughs> that would be something um, do we know that purple is not the same as yellow I have no idea <laughs> um, I don't think purple and yellow sort of see each other enough to, to know how they feel about each other What about, oh, right, right, this cell can no longer be five, look, because the fifth cell down here is pointing in the middle of a red streak, and it should have pointed at that one. So that's got to be three or seven now. So it's either pointing at yellow, or it's pointing at purple. If it was pointing at yellow, then yellow would become blue, and our four colours would be blue, red, green, and purple. So what colour is that then? 
Ah, oh, that's huge. Or is it? No, I think this is huge. Oh, this is this this is it. Right. I think I can get the color of this. I think this is green. Because let me let me explain. This cannot be a one because of this. So it's not pointing at the purple region, which is massive. So it's either pointing at green or it's pointing at red. Now, if it's pointing at red, these two turn red and this three clue is wrong. So it's got to point at green, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, which means it is green. That's the first thing it means. It means it is six. And this is very well. Hmm. Still don't know, do I? I still haven't got this elusive fourth colour because I can't tell whether purple and blue are the same. Oh, hang on. Is this now red? Yeah, that's red. Because if that's not red and joining to here, I can't put a, I can't make a big enough region. I can't join a, a region with a one in it to either any of those three. Yeah, yes, I suppose. And yeah, okay. So this, this, this is red. That's just forced. Now, actually, how? Ah, but if that's red, it can't join to this because that's definitely red. So that cell, right? So that's good. That's that cell and that cell have to be hived off because we can't make that also red because red regions don't touch each other. That's the whole point of the four color theorem. So slowly we're whittling this down, aren't we? We're getting somewhere now. Actually, hang on now. So I've got I've got eight here. So either of these is red. What about this blue region at the top? That's seven at the moment. So that's got to be blue. So now my red region here is a maximum size of six. So that's got both of those have got to be red, which means green has got to come down. So, hmm, what does that mean? I would love to know the nature of yellow. <laughs> um, what about blue? Do we know anything about blue? I, I think we did prove. Ah, yeah, hang on. Hang on, this cell. I thought I proved earlier on that red and blue were not the same. Yes, I did, because th this red is, is, is de definitely delineating itself from blue because of the arrow not pointing left. So red and blue are not the same. So this cell, one, two, three, four, cannot be four or six. And that means this cell is pointing at yellow. Ah, so I've now proved that yellow is blue. Oh, bobbins. I was hoping I might be getting into a fourth colour. But now, ah, see, this is, this is no good. <laughs> well, I suppose that's a five then, because the first time it sees blue is the fifth cell. It's not the seventh cell. So that becomes a five. So that's not a five. Now that's a four or a six. Now what's this doing? Oh, that's pointing at green. So one, two, three, four, five. I think we could have got that before. I just hadn't spotted that that was resolved. Green, oh, we already knew green was not the same as purple. The thing we're trying to prove is whether purple's the same as blue. And it's being, it's proving very difficult to do that, at least for me. Um, that cell is now a two by because it's got an arrow on it and that's the first red it'll see in that direction that cell depends on whether this is blue or not so one two three it could be a four so what are the options for that it's, it's definitely not red so it's four then it's seeing this five it's not five actually so that is not blue that's something else Maybe green? Is that going to be possible? I don't know. But it's it's definitely not those. So it would have to be... Yeah, oh, this is interesting. 
So either this is four pointing at purple, making purple blue, or it's eight pointing at the blue at the bottom. Four or eight, but both are possible. Rats. <laughs> um, ah, well, what's that then? What is that? It's definitely not. Well, it's the, the smallest number it can be. It's not able to point at this, which, which is not surprising because we know that purple's diff different from green anyway. So the first cell it's able to point at is this, but that cell is interesting. That cell is interesting because that cell is purple, I've noticed. But, and that's because if it wasn't purple, to build a region, it would have to take this cell, which would connect those two together, which would require this to have a, a westerly arrow, which it doesn't have. So the only region that can be is purple. And now uh, we haven't done our purple. We've still got one more cell to be purple. Right, let's come back to this then. So this cannot be a two or a three. It's green and red are not the same. And green and blue are not the same. And I know this is blue at the bottom. So doesn't this have to be pointing at this cell? That's my contention. I think that's right. I'm just going to check that because it's obviously pretty important. This can't be one or two by Sudoku. It can't be three because then it should have pointed at this cell. And anyway, purple cannot be green. It could be four. Um, if it's five, that's saying that red, it's th that's saying that green and red are the same, which we know is total nonsense. And if it's six, then it's saying that blue and green are the same, which we know is nonsense. So it is four. And that cell is therefore not purple and must join to this. So that is we're sort of starting to build a new thing here, which we know is different from this cell. Now, do we know whether this three is in blue or not? Ah, hang on, that's, that's an interesting thought now. I don't know. No, we don't know that. I still, this is this whole conundrum about the nature of purple and whether indeed it's blue. At the moment, I've only got three colours in the grid. So I sort of want this to be a fourth colour, but I don't think I can prove it is. This is weird, isn't it? It's really, it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. I think I've got to probably pay more attention then. What's that? Well, it could be a two. It could be a two. If it's a three, it's pointing at purple and that would turn purple blue. So it could be a three. It can't be, it can't point at red and it can't point at green but it could point at itself at the top and be eight. So I think that's two, three or eight. So if this was three, that... I was wondering if there's some relationship between this cell and this cell that's important. I can't see how to do that though. Um, Right. Okay. Now what do we do? Maybe we've got to... Maybe I've got to think more about giving ones to regions again. That was quite profitable, wasn't it? Or it could be... Oh, I've just had a horrible thought. It could be where digits go where there aren't arrows and using the negative constraint to build regions. That would be very horrible. Um, 
Or it could be that there's some simple way that I can prove that purple is not the same as blue. If purple was blue, all of these would turn blue. That would complete the blue region at the bottom. Ah, wow. Okay, I th let's try, try this logic on for size. If purple and blue are the same, then this is blue and all these are blue. Let me just show you what I'm thinking here. Now, this being a three is pointing at this cell. That's perfectly fine. What's this going to be then? Well, it's going to have to point at that cell because that's the first blue it sees and that's two threes in the same region. So that cannot be true. That's amazing. That is absolutely amazing. So this is not blue. And if it's not blue, then this cannot be pointing at this, but this must be another color. And we know it's not green and we know it's not red. So this is, a, so purple is the last color. And therefore we can do some things. That is forced, I think, to complete blue. This must be pointing, oh no, that could be blue now. <laughs> uh, it's definitely not three because we know that purple and blue are not the same. That's not, that's got to be a seven. So that's pointing down here. That's got to be, well, actually, hang on. This is, yeah, this clue is the one that tells you because this, we know that purple and blue are different. So that must be eight. And let me just check that because that's assuming it can't point at this. One, two, three, which it can't do because it can't be a five by Sudoku. Good grief. So now that's got to be purple. What color is this then? This must be green because we know it's not blue because then this would be wrong. We know it's not purple from this clue. We know it's not red because red's finished here and it would connect to red. So that is a green region. Oh, I see, and it's gonna to connect to that. Wow. So that's an eight by Sudoku. And well, we've got the four colors now. It's only taken me an hour. <laughs> um, I've got the four colors. I've got no idea what to do now. Six, seven, eight, that's got to be red by counting. So is that pointing at this? Yeah, you can't fit another red region in here. There's not enough space. It's not nine cells that aren't connected to an or to something that's already red. So that cell's pointing at that cell, which is another six. So it feels like J is using sixes probably to help with the Sudoku. That's not six anymore. So what color is this? Does this have to be green? Yeah, oh no, maybe that could be purple. No, but then that would have to be green to connect green up and there aren't any greens up in the top of the grid. So that doesn't feel right at all. I think this has to be green. It, it could in theory be purple, but let me show you the problem I see with that. I've got to connect this green up now to here. So that means this is a green cell, but there are no green regions it can point at. So that doesn't feel like it can possibly be true. So that's got to be green. That's penned in my purple. So my purple's final cell is definitely going to be from the top of the grid, one of these two cells. I need one more blue at the top of the grid. I need four, five, six, I need one more red. Ah. This is important. Right. So what we can say now is that this can't be blue because if that's blue, I need this cell to simultaneously be purple and red to complete both regions. Why is, why is that line segment drawn? Oh, that that's important as well. Of course I could have done this much more straightforwardly. Once, once these can't connect by this being red, red can only complete there, oh, which wouldn't have actually told me the color of this but that we, we now know the color of this from the work we've done at the bottom. That must be purple. So that must be blue. That must be red. Oh, this is going amazingly now. All of a sudden it's filling in. 
Um, we can do that. We can do that. We can do that. We're slightly clutching at straws doing that, admittedly. So is this going to be purple then? Yeah, it looks like there's got to be one. Per well, yes, okay, I see something here. This three region needs a one. Well, that's the only one available. So that's got to be purple. You can't fit another region in here that's nine cells large and then ring it with another nine cell region to connect these purples. So that's purple. Same thing must apply to that cell. That's purple. That cell therefore must be, is this red completed? No, so that red gets completed like that. So we've just got green one more cell of green right and that cell's got to be purple because it is delineated from green and therefore it's a two good grief and green needs one more cell so it can't get that cell so that's going to be purple and all we've got left is to do these two cells now um where is an arrow that's going to tell me how to do that I almost can't see this arrow. There is an arrow there. Maybe I should change purple now to, to something else. Gray. I could see the gray arrows, couldn't I? Yeah, okay. So this is this is fine now. I can see all the arrows. All I've got to do is use them properly. So every arrow should have a number on it. Mm, and does. Okay. So how do we fix these two? Oh, is it negative? Is it the negative constraint somehow? Uh, let me ring those at the bottom to make me feel like I'm doing something. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But, all right, so maybe maybe we don't get to know this yet, which would be elegant setting indeed if it's the Sudoku that sorts this out. Um, okay, well, I can, I can do some Sudoku. Where does two go in, the top, in this final column? Because it can't repeat in red. It's got to go there. Five and seven in the top row. Yeah, that's nice. Five and seven in the top row can't repeat in blue. So that's a five, seven pair and the five must go in the corner. So that's five, that's seven. These squares have got to be three, eight, and nine, I'm going to say. Now, what can we get rid of from there? We can get rid of absolutely nothing. Bobbins. All right, let's this column, three, four, eight, and nine into those squares, three, four, eight, and nine. That's not eight. Actually, that's not eight as well because of this sort of weird shape. That's not three. That's... Ah, here's something cute. Uh, because these two can't be eight, those two must include an eight in this column. They're in red, so those cells can't be red, or can't be eight. They are red. They can't be bl eight can't go in blue because of this. So eight is in one of those two cells, which means that is not eight. Um, what do we need across the top? We need three four six and nine three four six and nine the problem with this is it could quickly become a total pencil mark fest sort of absolute marks marks joy pride and joy but not mine um oh goodness me how, can, how what's the simple way of doing this come on use your brain we've got all the ones haven't we we did that using the four color theorem what about all of the twos we have got five twos in the grid. Now we've got six twos in the grid because where can I put the two in green? Wherever green goes for its last cell, none of those cells can be two because of the gray two. This two rules out those, that two rules out that two. So that's got to be a two, I think. So now I've got six twos and I can use that to argue about two in this gray region has to be in one of those two cells um, 
Oh, okay. Oh, hang on. I just noticed something that's annoy going to annoy me. I haven't put that line segment in. But where does two go in this funny region here? Not there. Not there because of this two pencil mark. Not there. Not there. Not there. So it must be here, I think. And that's rather nice because that gets me this two sorted out. So now I've got eight twos and I haven't put a two in column one. So that must go there. So there we go. We've got all the twos now. Let's look at threes. Ah, <laughs> uh, we haven't got many threes. We've got... Mm, okay. There's a small thing about threes. Look, three can't go in those grey cells because it would be a repeat. Three can't go in these two blue cells. So in the bottom row, there's a three in one of those two cells which means that's not a three. Uh, okay. Golly, this is not, this is, this is definitely not easy, is it? Even at this point. Still haven't got the final regions done. What am I missing here? I have got, I must make sure that I've put uh, digits on every arrow. I think I have done. But I'm s slightly concerned that I can't do this at all. And that makes me think there must be an easier way. Oh, oh no, nearly five in this region has to go in one of those. I thought I got it for a moment, but I haven't. So five in the bottom region now is not there and it's not there. So it's in one of those. Problem is we don't, I don't think we've got many fives in the grid. We haven't really got many. We've got lots of ones and lots of twos, but everything else like there's one four. Two eights. Oh, okay. Two eights. So eights in one of those two cells. There's an X swing of eights in those two dominoes now. Can we do anything with that? Oh, okay. It's, maybe it's not that difficult. Well, it's, it was very hard for me to see this, but where does eight go in column three? Now, I think it's only got one option. That can't be an eight by Sudoku. We know there's an eight in one of those two cells in red, so they can't be eight. So I think that is an eight. Now that must do damage. What about where eight goes in this column now? Because that eight's ruling out all those cells. Eight's in one of those two positions. There's another X wing on eight with those cells over there. So eight. Okay, so where does eight go in column nine now? This is absolutely vicious. But because because there's an eight in one of those two positions in column seven, and there's an eight in one of these two positions in column two, if this is an eight in the final grid, that will be an eight. So neither of those could then be an eight. If, on the other hand, this is an eight in the column two, then that's an eight, which still means neither of those can be an eight. Same thing is applying in these eights to those two squares. There's an eight already there. So the only place for eight in column nine is there. There, I've said it. Uh, we can... Hmm, what can we do with that? Well, I'm just gonna, I'm carrying on with eights. Where does eight go in column eight? Now I might be wrong about this, but it's not there doesn't seem to be able to be there. This X-wing rules out eight from there and there, and that eight rules out eight from there. So that's an eight. How many eights have we now got? We've now got five. Oh, I see, and we've got the two X-wings left. Bobbins, so that's not gonna do anything. Although, that's interesting. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. So whichever one of these is an eight, is gonna fix that that eight is in the other color. If that's an eight, that eight will need to belong to gray. 
But if this is an 8, that 8 will have to belong to green. So it's going to be something to do with 8s that tells us what tells us the how the final colouring works, I think. Right. So let's think of other digits. We thought a bit about... Si oh, sixes are maybe interesting. I have got some sixes in the grid. But not many. Six in this region. It's not there or there or there. So it has to be in one of those two, perhaps. Okay, well that's a little interesting for this region. Where does 6 go in this region? It's not there because of this 6. It's not there because of this 6. So it's up, it's up in one of those two positions, which means that's not a 6. So 6 actually at the bottom of the grid now, look, in this grey region at the bottom, doesn't seem to be able to go in any of those cells. Ah, so it has to go, it has to go there, I think. Let me double check that as well, because that seems very mysterious. It's sort of a bit like wizardry, isn't it? We've got six is out of those, six is out of there. That six takes care of that. I think that's the only place six can go. That's disappointing. That's not done anything really. So six in the bottom row now. You can see it can't go there because it would repeat in grey. It can't go here because of Sudoku. It doesn't seem to be in any of those. So it's in one of those two positions. But I don't think that's resolved. Uh, no, there's a six in one of these two in the top row. It does, seem, it does seem that sixes are restricted. It just may be not. Ah, okay. Hang on, hang on. Where does six go in this red region? Not there, not there. And that means it's vertical in one of those two cells. Now that is looking at that cell, which seems to imply that's become a six. Now in the bottom row, we were looking for where three went and it's got to go here now, which means this is not a three. Ah, ah, where does seven go in the bottom in this region? And I ask that because of these sevens. They're looking at those cells in red. So seven is in one of those cells, which means it's not here. So this is now a five, seven pair, which means this is now a four, nine pair, which means that, what does that mean? Uh, this must be a 4 or a 9 by Sudoku. Ah, oh, that's... Oh. <laughs> now, that is really interesting. See if you can look at this 4-9 pair and see something really rather clever. Or, well, it's not clever of me, obviously. It's clever of Jay. Oh, this is it. This is it. This does the disambiguation. For those of you who managed to do it, congratulations. Look, those are different digits. So how could this be a four or a nine? If this is four or nine, it rules out that digit from blue altogether. So that's got to be eight. And if that's eight, that's eight by our old friend, this sort of weird X-wing thing. Now there is an eight in green. So that's got to be a gray eight. And that delineates the final part of, oh, the final bit of the puzzle look. So now we can greenify this and take a stare at the fact that I think we've done our four colouring thingy thing. That's magnificent, isn't it? Now those two squares I'm noticing, whoa, 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 whoa. They are, I think, a five, seven pair, which apparently is not resolved, but that means that this is a four, nine, which is apparently not resolved. <laughs> um, do, oh, getting that, does that delineate any more of these arrows? I don't think it does, does it? No, and the eights were independent. These eights are independent of these eights at the bottom. So that's peculiar indeed. Indeed. 
Wow. Okay. Well, let's let's continue thinking about sevens for a moment then. Because where does seven go in this row? Well, not there. So in one of these cells. And that means that seven in this column is not in green. So it has to be here. So that's seven. That's five. That seems to suggest that five has become restricted in here, has it? Or not really? Maybe a tiny bit might be worth pencil marking. Although I don't, I really find it difficult when, when these are not even aligned. I, I couldn't, I might take that out. Uh, too much, too many bad experiences with making mistakes when I pencil mark in that sort of way across an irregular box. Um, right. So what on earth do we do now? Can we argue about that cell is not a six? I've just noticed by Sudoku. In fact, there's a three, four, nine pair in the top row now. So that's a six. So let's go back to sixes again. I've got six sixes. I've got an X wing of sixes there. So I should be able to get the other one. Or have I miscounted how many sixes? I can see. Yes, actually, look, this being a six has taken that from being a six. That's probably been available for a while. Sorry if you've been shouting at me about that. So seven has moved up here. Let's check sevens again. Mm, not many sevens to know things about, are there? What about... Ah! <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what about... Golly gosh. Right, I'm going to come back to this region again then. Where is 5 in this region? And I think it's got to be in one of those two cells, but from this column's perspective. But that's interesting now, because now these can't be 5 in row 7. And that seems to be the only cell that can be a 5. So we'll put 5 in there. Now we've got this cell being perhaps 3, 4 or 9. <laughs> Which does nothing. Um, oh, goodness me. Okay. What, I'm, what am I meant to do here? This is really challenging. It really is difficult. What about... What about... What about these digits then? What are they? They have got to be from three, four, seven, and nine. Those two can't be three. That one can't be four. Oh, for goodness sake. Okay, where does three go in this row? Sorry, that's been available for a while too, probably. So that's a three. Three in grey is now in one of those three positions, which is okay, that gets me rid of, that gets rid of a three here. Gives me a ah, gives me a four nine pair in this column. So these squares have got to be the other digits. They've got to be three, six, and seven. And that's Oh, it's nearly good. That's not six. That's not seven. Nearly good, but not quite good enough. So let's let's complete this box then with a nine, four, five, I want to say. Ah, four. Where does four go in this box now? This four puts it there. So that's four. And this must be a five, nine pair. And that four, look, knocks itself out of that cell. This five nine means we now know that digit. That's a seven to complete this column, which means that's a seven. Which is very interesting, but doesn't do anything. 
Um, okay, let's try. <laughs> let's try this column maybe. Three, four, eight, and nine. So three is seeing that. And ah, so actually, hang on, is that? Oh, that could be mighty. I'm just again. Whenever I find anything in this puzzle, I feel like I have to double and triple check it. But I think by Sudoku, this square is three, four, eight, or nine, and it can't be three or eight, so it's four or nine. And I'm seeing that's given me a four nine pair here, which seems to suggest that that's got to be a three, which means that's got to be a nine. And now I've got a three eight pair there what that's worth this now that's a four at the top of this column that's a nine ah that's a three so that's a nine and that's a four so those two squares are now four and five to complete column eight which means that square is not a four in green so we've now got a seven nine pair in green looking at that cell so that's become four that's become nine that's become nine that's become four Oh, this is lovely. That's become four. That's become five. And that cell is a nine by Sudoku, which gets us me a nine and a seven and a seven and a five. We might be about to do this. Uh, that's a four. I haven't got that much left, have I? Um, probably famous last words. That seven gives me a three here, which gives me a six here, which gives me a seven here. So now that cell's got to be five or nine. Ah, oh, no, this nine's doing it. Nine, five. That's got to be something. A seven. This has got to be something else. A five. It's still, I still haven't found a mistake, which is something to be pleased about. That's a nine and that's a three. So that's a three and that's an eight. That's an eight now. That must have to be a... No, that's a six by Sudoku. And in this box, we're looking for fours and fives. So that's a five. That is looking good in this column and that should be a four. And that's looking good in that column. So I think this might be correct. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> that was, well, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. What an idea. What an idea. I'd love to know if there is a, a clever way of doing the regions at the start because I found it completely bamboozling trying to keep track of what couldn't be what. Um, but it's so beautiful the way it unwinds and it felt very tight as well. Like we really had to use every arrow to its fullest potential to delineate the regions. And I, lo I loved the thing about the ones. That was really important. I could probably have done that instantly if I'd thought of it, and it may have made the solve more, well, faster. Um, but yeah, the idea that you then had to connect everything you'd found in the grid to a one somewhere, that seemed to help at the top, didn't it, there? It's a beautiful puzzle. I mean, that really is to, to hybridize the four color theorem with Sudoku in such an elegant and clever way. J Dyer, yet another bow needs to be taken. Uh, it's a long video. I hope I didn't interrupt your Sunday night uh, in an unpleasant way. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I do enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.